Hey, it's Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training, and in this video, we're answering a question from a player who asks, how do you get noticed as a freshman in high school baseball? So the first thing and most obvious thing is no matter what age you are, whether you're a freshman, whether you're a senior, the number one way to stand out on the field is with your performance, to play at a high level. You have to let your play on the field do the talking. But that being said, I wanna share with you five concrete things that you can do that are totally in your control to help you get noticed and stand out on the field in a positive manner as a freshman in high school. So without further ado, let's jump in. So the first thing you need to be doing is outwork the older players. You cannot afford to just blend in on the field, especially if you're looking to stand out as a freshman. So you have got to outwork them. It comes down to good old fashioned work ethic. So it starts not at tryouts, not in the season, but before the season. Be sure that you're going to all of the voluntary workouts uh, before the season actually begins. Unless you're playing another sport, if you're playing football or basketball or something else, be sure to communicate that to your coach. I'm totally cool with you playing multiple sports. And in fact, I encourage athletes to play more sports than just baseball, but if you're playing another sport, you better communicate that to your coach because you're an incoming freshman and your coach, chances are he does not know you. So you need to communicate that, that you're not just you know screwing around with your friends, you're actually staying in shape, you're playing another sport, you're working on your, your, your athletic abilities, you're just not working on baseball right now. So that's good for him to know and go you know make a good first impression and communicate that with him. Otherwise, if you're not playing another sport be sure you're showing up to all of the voluntary stuff before the season begins so you got to outwork the older players starts with the voluntary workouts and then obviously you know another thing is show up early and stay late you'll notice in high school there's not a lot of guys that show up early and stay late most players out there are you know just the average players that show up on time and they work hard during practice and then they leave on time well if you want to stand out you cannot just be one of those guys that shows up on time and leaves on time you got to show up a little bit early get in extra work and stay a little bit later, get in extra work, and don't just do that one time, do that with consistency, okay? So show up to the voluntary stuff, you've gotta get there early, and you've gotta stay late. And then uh, the very last thing that I would say is just, you know, flat out outwork during practice, outwork everybody, outwork them in the drills, out hustle them in the sprints, you know, get from station to station quicker, take your stretching more seriously, you know, be sure that you're mentally locked in on every single drill, don't have any, you know, lapses, where you're, you know, you're, you're out in la la land instead of dialed in and focused. Practice is not that long. It's two, two and a half, maybe three hours at the most. So stay locked in. All these things are going to help you uh, when it comes to standing out as a freshman. So that's the very first thing. You've got to outwork the older players. You can't just blend in with the crowd. All right, the next thing you can do, number two, is lead by example. Look, you're gonna have to earn your stripes, okay? Older players are not just gonna automatically respect a younger player like a freshman or look to them as a leader, at least initially. You're gonna have to earn your stripes and you're really gonna have to prove your worth. Now, that does not mean that you cannot be a leader as a younger player, as a freshman, but you have to lead by example. You have to lead from the front, in other words, okay? And what you have to understand about leadership is leading from the front that needs to happen before you're a vocal leader anyway, right? You can't just be the guy that's um, the least hard, hardest work, worker on the team and then you're the most vocal and getting on everybody else. It doesn't work like that. You've gotta be the hardest worker in the room. And then, uh, you know, occasionally if, if you need to get on somebody, that's totally fine to be a vocal leader at that point. But you can't just come in being a vocal leader like that at the beginning. You've gotta lead from the front. You've gotta lead by example. So how do you do that? Well, it's the little things. Be a line leader, you know? there's. Everybody seems to be a little bit shy, especially at the beginning of a new season, right? So jump out and be a line leader. Obviously, we talked about work ethic. You've got to have an unmatched work ethic. Nobody on the field should work harder uh, in practice. Nobody should be there earlier. Nobody should stay later. You should have an unmatched work ethic. That is automatically going to command respect. And then obviously, if you just take care of business on the field, your performance will also give you a little bit more respect because they'll say, hey, man, this guy's for real. He works really hard. He's a great leader and he's got it on the field and so that's exactly the, the recipe for success as far as standing out and getting noticed as a freshman so you've got to lead by example 
The third thing I would recommend to you is show that you're coachable. And it starts out the very first time that you really meet your new coaching staff because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So it's really important to make a good first impression and then just continue to be coachable throughout the entire season. You should always be coachable. That's That should be a skill that never goes away. And so when your coaches are talking to you, when they're instructing you, be sure that you listen. Be sure that you're digesting what they're saying. Be sure that you show good body language and you're, you're willing to accept feedback. When they give you feedback, you know, take what they're saying and actually apply it into your game because what their goal is, is they're trying to make you better and they're trying to uh, make you better so that you in return help the team become better and your team will win more games because of that. I mean, their, their heart is in the right place and I think many times uh, players are afraid of getting coached or they think like it's criticism. They think, oh, coach is on me again. And what you got to realize is coaches do that because they care. They want to get the best out of you and you have to take constructive criticism as a, a, a sign that your coach sees something in you, sees more than uh, what you're currently showing, sees that, oh, if we just tweak this and tweak this, you're going to be a much better ball player. Uh, and so that's not something negative and that's not something to shy away from. You should embrace being coached. And the biggest thing is, you know, when your coach stops yelling at you, when your coach stops talking to you and stops providing feedback, that's the time that you should be a little bit nervous because that's, they've reached the point where they no longer really care. That's when you need to be nervous. So if your coach is talking to you, if they're, you know, providing constructive criticism, take it in stride. That's a good thing. You always have got to be a coachable player. You got to be a coachable student. You got to be a, a coachable you know, employee in the workforce one day. So coachability goes a long way. All right, I got two more tips that I think will really help you out. The next one is stay within yourself. I think players, especially freshmen, feel an immense amount of pressure to perform. They feel like they need to make big things happen their freshman year, otherwise they're a complete failure. They feel like they're a failure if they're not on varsity as a freshman or if they're not the standout player on varsity as a freshman. And so I would encourage you, don't put too much pressure on yourself. You've got to stay within yourself. I think it's good to have a little bit of anxiety and feel a little bit of pressure because I think that that ultimately helps you perform at your peak. Having some anxiety, that's a good thing because it shows that you care. It shows that you want to play at a high level. So that's a good thing, but you've got to stay within yourself at the same time. Don't get outside of yourself. Don't try to, in other words, do things that you're not capable of doing. You've got to play your game, play to your strengths, you know, your weaknesses. You want to constantly try to improve them and turn those into strengths, but don't be somebody that you're not. You know, understand the type of hitter you are and the type of player that you are and stay within yourself. Just don't try to do too much. Don't press too much because I'm telling you, less is more. If you stay within yourself, ironically, you're actually going to play at a higher level than if you try to go out and you, you get out of yourself. Okay, so stay within yourself and play the game. Be sure you're playing the game because this is, you know, play the game, not the players, in other words, because this is the same game that you've always played. You know, you're facing a pitcher on the mound. Doesn't matter his age, right? Doesn't matter if he's eight years old or if he's 80 years old. It's still the exact same game and it's you should still have the same approach. You're getting a good pitch to hit. You're attacking good pitches and you're hitting the ball hard somewhere. That does not change whether he's eight years old or 80 years old. So just stay within yourself. Recognize, okay, yeah, it's a higher level, but this is the same game that I've always played. And the last tip that I think will really help you out, be patient and don't get frustrated. This one's such a big deal, okay? I understand, like we were just talking about earlier in the video, I understand that you want to do big things as a freshman, but you've got to be patient. You've got to understand that maturity takes time, and you're going to be maturing a lot, both physically and mentally, over the next four years, okay? So if you're you know, one of the smaller players on your team as a freshman, that's okay. See where you're at when you're a senior. I'm telling you, there's gonna be a lot of maturity and growth that takes place, again, both physically and mentally over the next four years. So don't get discouraged. Obviously, work hard every single day and play hard every single practice and in every single game and try to make the most out of every day. But just understand, it's stepping stones, it's a process. Rome wasn't built in a day. Don't get discouraged just because you might not be the biggest guy or the fastest guy or the best player right now or whatever. Just continue to get 1% better every single 
single day. I'm telling you, look up in four years. You're not going to be the same person or same player as you are right now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful for you. If it was, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And hitters, be sure to go download the free contact point checklist that I put together for you. This checklist is going to make sure that your swing looks picture perfect at the point of contact so you can maximize your bat speed, your power, and your consistency at the plate. So it's 100% free. Just click on the link down below in the comment section or in the description to go download that right now. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.